Here we would like to show you an arterial line setup. This is an arterial catheter which has been placed in the femoral artery and as we can see the end of the catheter at this hub is connected to the transducer set. As we move further we can see a port here with a three-way valve which can be used for sample collection and is also used during zeroing and then we as move further we can see there is another port with a three-way and then there is a transducer with a blue rubber which can be pulled for flushing this transducer should be at the level of the heart what we call as the phlebostatic axis which roughly corresponds to the right atrium when placing it zeroing it it should be kept at this level and whenever we change the position of the patient it is desirable that you zero the system again from the transducer we can see two lines coming up one is a white wire which it connects to the monitor and the other one goes to a pressure bag as you can see this is the pressure bag which is hanging. The pressure bag is needed because the arterial system is very high pressure and if we do not control it by another pressure from another side there could be back flow. This bag is inflated and the inflation pressure is generally kept at 300 mmHg. This ensures that the back flow would not be there. We have closed the port here and also this causes a continuous flush of fluid through the system which is roughly at around 4 ml per hour. So when you are using an arterial line in a person, around 100 ml of fluid goes per day because of this and because of frequent flushing, a few more ml will go to the fluid balance. So you should calculate that as daily input. Now to draw sample, we put one syringe here in the proximal port and keep this port closed to the syringe and we place another syringe at the further port and we will close the syringe to the transducer side and open it to the arterial side. This is the proximal port which will be the syringe for which, uh, from which we will collect the sample and this is the dead space from this to the catheter, we got to calculate the dead space and discard twice of that after only which we take a sample. So we open this port and this flush fluid coming and you can see the blood coming out through the line till the point it reaches here we have seen around 105, 1.5 ml of uh, fluid has been withdrawn so we withdraw another 1.5 and till we reach the 3 ml mark we stop and close this now oh on oh now a calculated dead space was around 1.5 ml and as 3 ml of fluid has been withdrawn from this distal syringe we can see the blood has traveled through this line set and now we are ready to draw a sample. So you can close the port to the other side, it's open to the artery line and take as much sample as needed. After the sample is taken, we close the port again, withdraw the syringe, close the port and now we can push back this fluid back into the system this towards the arterial line so that the catheter gets cleared and now we are ready to flush the system as well so that the blood gets cleared from the line so we see that we have flushed and now the line has become clear whenever we set this arterial line for the first time we have to zero it with the transducer at the level of the heart and we'll show you how to zero the system we have to close the port 
towards the arterial side now the catheter line is open to atmosphere and now we go to the monitor press the ipp zeroing point accept it and see that the line the pressure comes to zero reference so it has come to zero reference once at the zero reference we close the port to the atmosphere and open the arterial line to the catheter and then look at the graphical presentation so we have a beautiful graph and presentation we have the systolic diastolic and the mean arterial pressure so we have done the zeroing once and this zeroing needs to be repeated if the position of the transducer related to each other keeps changing and we will show you the importance of that so many times we prop up the patient we can lower or uh, raise the level of the bed if we do that the position of the transducer to that of the phlebostatic axis keeps changing i will just show you how the pressure changes when the transducer is lowered so when it is lowered to the body you keep looking at the bp the bp keeps rising up so you can see the bp rising now if you bring it to the level above the heart you can see that the bp starts to fall so this tells you that if the transducer is not correctly placed you will get false bp readings so whenever major changes in position take place you should again zero the system the other maneuver we can teach at the same time is the flush test or the square wave test which is done to check the dampening in the system what we do is we pull the flush and then release it and then you can see i frozen it at this point you can see the arterial waves one after the other and then there is a big pause and then you see there are one and half deflections in the system and again the waveform has started again which tells you that the system is correctly dampened if there is under dampening which happens due to kinks uh, bubbles blocks then the system will return to normal before one and a half waves and if it is under dampened then there will be more than one and a half oscillations because the uh, system is at a higher higher resonance this generally happens when we put in long arterial catheters which make wavy movements inside the artery so the flush test is basically done to look at the uh, effect of dampening on the bp under dampening or over dampening can cause changes in the systolic and diastolic blood pressure but the mean arterial pressure remains normal and it is a mean arterial pressure which is generally the best reflection of the hemodynamic status and in most patients we look at a level of 65 and above